uh, do we need psychology? That's the question, really, to the end. And of course, it connects to, to what uh, uh, Chris was saying about learning from all of them. Literally, some of these people you're quoting were disillusioned by psychology. Like, they've been literally just like, forget about psychology. So, tell us in this question. So, that's a question we're we'll getting. We must liberate psychology. We must be liberated from psychology. I, I, I generally think so. We've been doing some. Uh, and of course, you mentioned accompaniment. Um, about, uh, and one of our, of our younger researchers, we've been doing some amazing work. I think so. The entirely different, about writing different, the producing knowledge that's refractive while we're talking to each other. One of the things, uh, we have asked the same question. And she tells, can I tell this story? Can I tell it? Well, she tells about uh, us in this group we have created, which is fantastic. But one of you know the, the person who has been holding us together is a is a, is a man uh, who looks like a guru called Mohammed Sida, right? And, <laughs> and then and then she so we have organized a, a community engagement project, and one of us uh, is the younger people, Sarah Day, who's here, tells about about a woman she had met a couple of weeks back who had been abused by a boyfriend who needed to go to get a protection order. And Sarah says, I'm, I have to accompany this woman, leave the, what we're doing here, a psychologist and whatever we are, and go to the police station. So she's doing this accompaniment physically. And I love the story, she, the way she, she tells us. She told us in February 1st, and she's now, she's now written it down. But in that moment, I, I realized that even when you think you have created a wonderful space and you know, supporting the community, there's this other work you've never been taught. I'm literally getting up from your office as a clinical psychologist in the mm -hmm. hospital and from, uh, working with people to police station because, because of this work. So that's another question about, I mean, is, the, is that psychology? Is, is that psychology? Well, this is a question to you. I mean, is this, for, for, for counseling psychologists who are here and other kinds of psychologists, is that psychology? Do you teach this to people in the class? Okay, that's the next two other questions for I, I want to. In walking around, traveling, I've traveled so many universities lately, uh, yeah. students grab me at the end. After we've spoken, they grab me at the end. They say, yeah, yeah, we, we, this African psychology of yours, okay, fine. But what about, they ask me two questions, uh, in addition to the like it's a lot of questions. One is, this, you don't talk enough about healing. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you can do all of this stuff, but we, racism, sexism, all kinds of coloniality has just messed us up. It's messed our families. And it took me so long to get around to this part about, and you know, we talked with Chris yesterday, about what what uh, psychologists complicit with coloniality has done to people. Mm. District 6, just the land, just, just casting people off, right? And so they say, how about you do the psychology that both heals us and does the spirit, heals our spirits? So, I'm not that kind of psychologist. I've read, I written a little bit thing about it, but I'm not that. <laughs> so two questions to, to, to end here, then. Um, and, and I think it was Umi again talked about the concrete economic, political, cultural, social struggles. You have to connect to those, and we don't do that. So psychology has a major limit, including liberal economic psychology. Maybe, maybe I need to be convinced, although I still pay as a psychologist. But three things. Three questions, again. Uh, so do you think, how many of you here think, and me and Chris, think we will, in this society, in India, in Australia, adequately resolve the problem of immigration in the world? I mean, really, uh, even you can bring it down to psychology, we will <coughs> adequately resolve the problem of Africans, I don't know how they do that, traveling now from from countries and they go to Mexico, they go up, they, they want to cross. I mean, how, how long does people travel? Of course, the Mexican Mexican moving into, and then the Somalis in Sweden, the Zimbabwe's in South Africa, the Bengali people who have been, you know, histories of Bengalis were cast out of India. Are we going to be able to do this as the kinds of people that we're trained to be? I was asking Reed, how many of you? Hands up, who thinks we're going to solve this problem before some of us die? You think, who much thinks we get? It's, uh, it's optimistic. I don't. Okay, I'm not here. Second, how many of you think we will? 
I mean, this keeps me awake at night. How many of you really think we're going to solve the problem for violence in South Africa? In a generation. And it end it. End the problem of violence, of men's violence against children, women, other men, non gender non conforming people, and the earth. <laughs> and the earth? No. Not in our life. In our life. In our life. Then. No. Plus, how many of you are happy <laughs> with your lives? <laughs> no, really, how many of you are happy with your lives? Well, I was hoping for more hands because somehow we can be we're born into, into a world that's unjust. And we, we realize it's injustice. But at a certain point, we become part of that injustice. We become happy with our lives. Thank you.